If you've ever found yourself struggling with color grading, spending way too much time trying to get the look you want, or feeling frustrated because it's not working the way you thought it should, this video is for you. As video creators, we all know how important color grading is when it comes to finalizing a project. But sometimes, no matter what you do, it doesn't look right, especially if you're new to color grading altogether. It can be super frustrating. So in this video, I'm going to break down and show you some key things that you need to think about, both when you're shooting and also in post-production in like Final Cut Pro or uh, Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna help you get that perfect look without all of that stress. In this video, we're gonna keep it pure and simple. So I'm gonna start with the picture profile because this makes a huge difference when it comes to the ability to color grade in the first place. Now, for color grading specifically, the best profile is always the flattest one that your camera offers. So if you're shooting on a Sony like I am right now, I found that S-Log3 is the best option. It just gives you the most dynamic range to work with, meaning that you'll have much more data to work with all of the colors. The extra flexibility really lets you fine tune footage in post and get the exact look that you want. Now, if you are brand new to color grading, S Cinetone for Sony is also a good option as this requires a little less work, but still contains a lot of dynamic range and you know, much more than one of those standard picture profiles. Now, dynamic range is essentially just more data. It's more ways to improve and move your picture around. When you're pulling in the footage, it actually looks like the opposite of this. So you'll go and film something, you'll think you're filming in this great high dynamic range picture profile. You pull it into Final Cut or Premiere and it looks super flat and gray. But the idea is that you can actually push and pull the footage. But you know what, let's go more into that a little later. Next up is lighting. Now, let's talk about something that can make or break, and that's lighting. Today, I'm in an awfully lit meeting room, and as you can probably tell, this is nowhere near as well lit as our other videos in our main Edits Key Studio. So if your lighting sucks, your color grading is also gonna suck too. It's really just how it is. You can sometimes work around it depending on the project, but bad lighting will always make things harder. For example, if you're filming a nightclub promo, the lighting can be kind of all over the place. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's pretty terrible. In those cases, I like to use one of our editor's keys LUTs. I'll put a description in the link below, and this just really helps to pull the whole thing together. But if you're working on something more narrative-based or you know, much more professional, and you actually have control over your lighting, then you need to make sure it's solid. And as a beginner tutorial, again, let's keep this kind of simple. If you're shooting indoors, grab a cheap LED light and make sure your subject is well lit. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have a tube light on me now, but I'm gonna grab one. So you can pick up something like this on Amazon. Okay, that's pretty bright. But just looking at this, look, you can see the difference on the lighting. And this is why I didn't wanna put any of the lights on because we're talking about in this video. Let's have the, the lighting off me here. Look at this. It's quite subtle. You're probably watching this video and think, actually, it looks lit okay, I'm in front of a big window. But actually have a light on your subject. This is probably a little bit bright, but you can see the difference this makes to my face. We can move it around, we can put it behind me, we can light the, the desk if we need to. Just look at the difference of this. Just say the focus was on the MacBook Pro. Look at the difference there of just having decent lighting. I've changed it to a blue color. You can add these kind of effects. It really just makes a huge, huge difference. Now, if you're outside, make sure you're not overexposing or underexposing your footage. A quick way to check this is actually in your camera's exposure meter. If it's balanced, you should be good to go. But keep it as close to zero as possible on the meter, and all cameras have this. So if you look at the meter, if you go above plus two, things will start to look far too bright 
and overexposed. Go below minus two and things will be too dark and it's just hard to recover this in post-production. So just for beginners, stay as close to zero as you can. All right, now let's talk about post-production, our favorite part. Personally, at the moment, I really love a warm vintage look in our films because I've always been a big fan of that classic filmic aesthetic. So here's my process. First, I create an adjustment layer and then I drag it above my clip. Next, I'm gonna apply a LUT. I'm going with the radio LUT from the Editor's Keys Vintage LUT Pack. So right away, right, you can see how it gives the footage that warm, nostalgic feel. But here's where a lot of people go wrong. They just chuck this LUT on and they wonder why their footage still doesn't look quite right. So the key is to fine tune your clip underneath the adjustment layer to really dial everything in. So here's what I would do. First of all, fix the white balance using the eyedropper tool if you're using Premiere Pro. Then I'll make some small adjustments, maybe increase the brightness, add some contrast, and then tweak the saturation. And then looking at this, I would maybe pull the shadows down a little bit. Now after that, I'm going to go into the curves panel and do a simple S curve. Just adding two points right here, and adjusting them slightly so we get that extra bit of depth. Now we can dive into this in another tutorial. If you want, let me know in the comments section below. But for just now, just copy what I'm doing right here. All right, so I think let's try this on another shot. Um, I'm gonna take the same radio LUT, but then turn down the intensity a little here. Uh, then I'm gonna tweak the exposure. And you know, I actually think this clip needs to be uh, a little bit brighter. So I'll adjust that. I'm gonna add some contrast and then fine tune the shadows. And look at that, it looks absolutely great. What I'll do is I'll quickly turn the adjustment layer on and off so you can see the difference between this on and off obviously. And just look at that, what a difference this makes. Okay, so one more. Let's do the exact same steps on this clip, but I'm gonna use the La Hacky Sack. This one has a really nice look to it, especially for this clip. Uh, what I'm gonna do is tweak some of the basic corrections. And there, there you go. I think that looks really great. Now, some extra tips for you. When you're color correcting, open up your Lumetri scopes and stick to these guidelines. Never have your exposure or highlights above 100. If it is, it means it's overexposed. And then, in the same way, never have your blacks or shadow below zero. This means it's being crushed and it's just gonna look too bad. And there you go. At the moment, this is how we're doing our Editor's Keys color grades with our footage. Everyone has their own way of doing things and you know this is an artistic thing. So you've gotta do what works best for you. But this is what works for us and this is how we get that bold, warm, filmic look. So if you wanna check out the LUT pack I used, I'll drop a link in the description below. And you know, our LUTs or any LUTs, I don't wanna be over salesy on this, but they really do just enhance your footage. You'll have in mind what you want your footage to look like. And I think sometimes when you've been filming, you've got a lot of editing to do, you wanna to get to that place quickly because you can always tweak it. So even if you find a LUT, even if it's not one of the Editor's Keys ones, maybe it is, and you get it and it's a little too dark, you can adjust it. But it gets you to that finishing position much closer than if you're trying to do it all yourself. And of course you should at some point try and do it all yourself, but definitely check out those LUTs. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you like the color grade and I'll see you in the next video.